Hey guys, this is Scrubby speaking and today we're going to show you how you can create a bot. This is a small tutorial for you that want to use some JavaScript to start making some bots for a different site or maybe extension. If you want to make extensions, you perhaps need to look some into uh, making graphic designs. If you just want to make simple scripts, this should be enough if you got some basic knowledge of JavaScript. So when we want to make a bot, uh, the first we need to choose is how this bot will keep on running. Some will use like a while loop. What I will recommend is like this set interval and then make a function in that interval that will repeat uh, every time loop. You can see here I said 5000 millisecond or the same as five seconds. How I like to change what the bot do, I have made this variable I call step to perform. This one I change in each step to move on to the next one. When this startup information has been typed, you need to figure out how many steps you actually need. You can see here I chose five and maybe also think about which function is needed to fulfill those quests. You will see my five solutions in the next slide where you see I have chosen uh, five different functions. The first three are Boolean function. They will return a true or a false. That is new round started, should but bet, is round over. My other two functions have a specific job like update result and place bet. Going deeper into this function, we will see how each of those solve their specific task, like new round of start will say if a new round have begun and update result will like tell you what the last result have been and make some decision based on that. If we go over to how we actually create our first method here, new round started, we first need to figure out what can tell if a new round is started. So when we go on the side, we see we have this rolling that is counting down. This one we could use to know if this number is high, we know it's a new round. And if it's low, it's about to be rolled. So when we wanna try to use this element, we need to investigate it. As you see right here, we right click on it, investigate and elements will pop up and show you something. You can see right here, this is what it shows. Here is the value that is right here, but of course there's a little bit of time difference between those two pictures was taken. But what we see is that it have this class value and G, T and S, C, 452, And we are going to use that since it don't use any ID. So what we're going to do is we're going into console. Then we're going to make check if this, if we can find this document and now on the right spot. For this, we go into console and write document that get element by class name, make brackets and inside those brackets, we make this quotation marks. And then we write in the classes. As you see here, I write value and ng TNS. Yeah, this long here. After that, I actually choose a child. You see, I choose the first one. This will actually be an array. So I will choose the first one and check if that one is this one. You can see here, I made it. And we can see this one is for, yeah, this one is marked out. That means that the object we are getting from here is actually this one. Now we need to get out the value only and not the whole object. For that, we write in a text, as you see right here, and we can see we get out 4.57. What we do now is we are taking that value and checking if that value is higher than a certain amount. My solution was to check if the time was higher than 10. This function could also be used on like if the round have ended because you could like choose that as the blocker down here and make sure that when first it enter here, go through all this. And then it goes here and say, it's not over 10. Okay, it's under 10. Boof, we start over. And this one will then wait for it to be over 10 again. And you have a nice loop that only repeat when a round is over. When we go to this shoot the bot bet, this is here. You actually need to figure out the logic if you choose to build another button I have. 
It can take a little bit to figure out how and which number you want to automate the betting on. For my solution here, we are checking if the last 100 rounds have been less than a certain amount of rolls. This object here is actually how many times there have been red in the last 100 round. And here we have black and green. Those informations can again be found on the side right up here, as you see. My solution on the logic is actually we first check if the bot is already betting. If it is betting, it needs to skip it and just return through. If it's not betting, it needs to check if there have been less red than X amount in the last 100. If there have been less red than X amount, the betting color will be set to one. That means it will stop betting on red and it will return true, which means conditional and need to move on. If there have been too many reds for this condition to be true, it will go down and check the condition for black and do the same procedure except changing betting color to tree and the same it will do with green. If none of those returns true, it will go to our last condition and just return false and the bot will know it should not bet. Now some of you can see that betting color in here at some point will be changed to one, three and two and maybe wondering how the betting color is set back to zero. So we can go in through this loop again and find a new output. This is actually where update result comes in. To update a result, I first need to know what I bet it on and I also need to know what the outcome was. For this, I can use the knowledge I have that red is always one to seven and black is always eight to 14 and gray is always zero. So again, I will start go up here and finding what the last yeah row was. And I can find that right here. What I first should have done was checking if I'm actually betting. Because if I'm not betting, I can just move on. But if I was betting, I should actually check if the outcome was lower than 8 and higher than 0. Because then I know it's a red. If it's a red and we're betting, then I need to check if the betting color also is 1. If it is one, it means we bet on red and since the result is red, we're one and we can start over and resetting the betting color and set the current bet to the start bet again. If we didn't bet on red, we need to check which color we betted on to secure the right increase. First, we check if we bet it on black. If we bet on black, we'll use the current bet to set that to the current bet times the red black increase. If it wasn't black we bet it on and it wasn't red, that leave us only with the green and that means the current bet should be increased with the green increase. I have one of these for yeah, any outcome if it was black, green or red. This one is just the red as you see. When we need to place a bet, we start to need to get some of the buttons because now we actually want to interact with the site. So for this, I made this bind BTNS, that means bind buttons, where I find this button 001. How I do that is I check all the buttons I can find. If one of them have the inner text of 0 0.01, then I will bind that button to BTN001. If someone else have the inner index of clear, I'll bind that button to BTN clear. With the bidding buttons, I found that this method right here founded them and it was positioned in 0, 1 and 2 of the array with red, green and black. Now I have the buttons to yeah, actually interact with. What I now do is I use those buttons inside the place bed. What I first do is make sure that the previous bed is cleared. After that, we make sure that we click on 0 0.01 as many times as the current bed is. After we have changed the bed, it all depends on betting color of which color we are betting on. And if it was one, we click on the red button. If it was two, we click on the green. And if it was three, we click on the third. I know this can be pretty hard to understand all of it. And you're more than welcome to leave some questions in the commentary and I will do my best to answer them. At last, I just want to thank you for watching this video. Remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed it and also subscribe if you want more updates about bots. We also have a new giveaway this week and I'm thinking we're going right over to that. But before we do that, remember 
that you can vote on the next video in our community. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. I'm thinking we're jumping right over to ending this week's giveaway because that was won by Tanya Bagwat that asked if uh, my Steam ID was included in the code I share with you so it could send me coins. In other words, if it was malware. And no, Tanya, it's not malware. No worries. Furthermore, I ask if I could make a bot for Gamdom. And yeah, that is possible if I see a wild demand for it. But at the moment, I can't yet see what I should build. But guys, this week, we also have a new giveaway up. So let's see what that is. Gaboof. Yeah, as you know, it's an AK red line field test. I hope someone will enjoy running around uh, killing some counter terrorists with this lit gun right here, man. If you want to join in on this sweet darling, all you have to do is actually write a comment and be a subscriber of this channel. Once again, thank you for watching. Remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and see ya next time.